G'day, I'm Paul. So we've been reviewing a whole stack of utes lately. So I thought, why don't we mix things up a little bit and go with V8 SUV. Um, this is the Bentley Bentayga. This one here in particular is called the Bentayga S. So it's powered by the twin turbo V8 petrol engine. Sounds incredible, by the way. Uh, this is priced at just over $450,000. If that's too expensive, the entire Bentayga range kicks off at under $400,000, thankfully. This competes with things like the Lamborghini Urus, the Range Rover, and also the Rolls-Royce Cullinan, because you can get this in a W12 as well, which is pretty awesome. Now, today we're going to do a detailed review of this car. So if you do want to skip ahead to other parts of this review, you can use the time codes on the screen, or if you're on YouTube, you can scroll down and use the chapters below. And if you haven't done so, Already. subscribe to our channel and press the bell icon because that's going to tell you every single time we drive something stunning like this. So let's talk design. This is the part where I would normally tell you how many colors are available. Here, it's virtually infinite. You can color match this to anything that you want. And you do have some free colors, and then you can spend like $60,000 on optional colors. So you do have a stack of choice. And it goes the same with options. There are a lot of options on this car. I'm not gonna bother naming all of them. Uh, if you are ordering one of these, you will go through the whole bespoke program of fitting your car out with whatever options you want. So I'll leave that up to you. But but I do love the fact here with the S that this has picked up the black pack. So black grille, you get black highlights around the lights there. Really is quite a sinister looking vehicle, especially here in this red color. It looks absolutely sensational. So down the bottom here, you have a big open grille. They haven't bothered going down the, uh, the path of any sort of open and closing louvers. This is all about as much cooling as you can get. It has a top speed of 290 kilometers an hour. So you can just imagine this thing hoofing along at that pace. It needs to get as much cooling as it can through that cooling stack. You've got a camera down the front there, big Bentley logo up the top, and that black finish continues down the bottom here. This car also has a night vision camera, and that is where that's nestled in. You have Matrix LED headlights. I love this design as well. It's got like that sort of shimmering crystal look to it, similar to the BMW i7 we looked at recently, but buried in there you have all of those elements for the Matrix LED lights, and then radars on either side as well. Whip around to the side. Look at this, so 22 inch alloy wheel. This is one of the optional wheels that you can get. And this here is in the shape of a scythe, which is uh, like the thing you slash uh, wheat and stuff with. So pretty sort of cool looking design there, 22 inch alloy wheel with the satin chrome finish there and then piano black on the inside would be there for Bentley. Enormous brakes as well. Have a look at the size of that caliper on that rotor. Very, very impressive. Um, up the top here, more of that black highlight. An S badge down here to signify that this is the S model. Don't get S confused with having more power or torque than the entry level V8. This carries the same. It just gets a whole lot more options that a lot of buyers would have specced anyway. You do also have Azua, which is kind of like a luxury version of this, and then Speed, which is the W12. Down the bottom there, you have carbon trim all the way down the side of the car, and that carbon trim continues inside and also around the back as well. Piano black up the top here indicator built into there you've also got a camera nestled under there as well black here instead of chrome privacy glass roof rails and then come around to the back around the back here you're going to find a shark fin aerial up the top there you've got carbon fiber spoiler just there stop lamp mounted high up the top there. Now this is pretty cool as well. So individual Bentley letters, you actually open the boot by pushing this and I'll show you that later on how that works. Look at these exhaust pipes. So as part of the MY23 changes, this actually got a more sonorous free flowing exhaust. So I'm keen to see what that sounds like on the move, but I do love more of that black highlight down the bottom there. It really is quite sinister looking. I also think this got significantly prettier when they did the facelift because I don't know, when it launched, it just didn't really look that nice. Whereas the facelift, I think really just refines it beautifully and it has so much presence out on the road. It is quite an imposing looking thing. So let me know what you reckon in the comment section below. Do you like the design now that it has been facelifted or do you think there is still a little bit more work to do? So we're inside the Bentayga. We will kick off with the key. So on the back there, you've got the Bentley logo, Bentley inscribed around there as well. Some of this beautiful sort of knurled finish on the edge of the key. And then on the front there, you've got unlock, lock, boot, and that's like a rubber finish there. So pretty cool looking setup. It's a proximity sensing key, so you grab the door handle. Once you're inside, this is your push button start. So 
let's talk about the design. So I think this this looks beautiful. Like they really have gone to so much effort here to to just make this look and feel premium. You've got leather on virtually all of these surfaces. Beautiful Alcantara finish here on the roof and also options here on the steering wheel as well. They've even thought about things like these air vents. They are in a sort of metallic enclosure, which is really cool. And then you open and close them using these little levers here. So yeah, it is just a throwback to Bentleys of old and it just shows me that they're actually thinking about this stuff and trying to make it as luxurious as possible. The color palette in here has been very tastefully selected. So red on black, I think looks fantastic with the red piping there as well. So they really have gone to a lot of effort to make this look good. You can go wild with the specs here as well to the point where I think that if you order a wild thing from a dealer, they'll probably take like a 50% deposit off you just in case you pull out and they can't sell it. But um, yeah, that's that's sort of exactly uh, what you can do here. You can really make it your own. I do love the carbon inlays here and along the top there. Although I did notice this is slightly deformed up the top here. So I don't know whether during the manufacturing process someone has damaged that, but a little bit disappointed to see a lack of quality there. The other thing I really don't love as well is some of these buttons, they just feel a bit cheap and, I don't know, just a bit cheap. So when you push them, they just don't really sort of feel that nice. They've got that sort of plastic finish to them. I would have loved to see like a, I don't know, metallic finish to these like you have here on the paddle shifters. But anyway, minor complaint from me anyway. Now, what are your touch points like? So that is really nice and soft and not too bad on the door. How soft are they? Well, we've got our gyrometer. We've tested the main surfaces in this cabin. If you want to see how this car compares to others that we've tested before, have a look at the link in the description below. Builds quality. It is built like a battle tank. Very impressive. And then door slam. Sounds good. Now you will hear that though, when you slam the door, it actually has soft clothes on it as well. So if you don't go all the way, it will then just suck in on its own for that premium feel. So let's talk about infotainment. Uh, central to the cabin is this 10.9 inch infotainment display. Look, in the context of the rest of its competitors, it's fine. But if you look at where the industry is heading, 10.9 inches is pretty small these days. The screen ahead of the driver is a bigger 12.3 inch display. So I think as part of a future update for Bentayga, they might go with a bigger infotainment display. But for the most part, this does the job perfectly fine. Um, located in here, you're gonna find inbuilt satellite navigation. Um, the screen itself is not too bad. It can be a tiny bit laggy on first start. Uh, you know, when you're going through the menus and stuff, it's not too bad. It's just sometimes you can catch it napping a little bit there. In terms of radio, you have AM, FM, DAB, digital radio. Uh, and then in addition to that, it's all plumbed through a 12 speaker sound system. Now, like a lot of things on this car, you can go optional with the sound system and go bananas. The standard 12 speaker sound system is fine. It's sort of nothing too crazy. It does the job, but if you do value your sound systems, you're gonna to want to option one of the optional sound systems to get that little bit of extra kick. In terms of smartphone mirroring, they've actually gone to town on this. So you have wireless Apple CarPlay, I'll show you what that looks like. So yeah, full screen integration there. It all looks nice. It's very quick and sharp and easy to use. And then you also have Android Auto. I'll show you what that looks like. So full screen integration again, except this is wired. So not a wireless setup. Works nice and fast. No sort of dramas there at all. Now let's talk about the screen ahead of the driver really quickly. Now, I really like this display because it is based on the rest of the uh, Audi Porsche range that this platform is based on, but you do have some sort of custom imagery here. So Bentley logo down the bottom there, this left side stays static, but then you can go supersized on the right hand side, depending on which menu you've chosen. So, you know, it does look sort of custom enough like that, uh, but then you can get that advanced sort of tech of having the full screen nav display. Let's talk about safety and there's a point here that's gonna frustrate me a bit, but I'll run you through it anyway. So you have autonomous emergency braking with pedestrian detection that comes standard. Uh, you also have blind spot detection, which is just located in the wing mirror there. You have rear cross traffic alert, front and rear parking sensors, and a 360 camera that I'll show you in just a second. But you have to option what they call the touring specification, which is some $16,000 to get lane departure warning with a lane keeping assistant, radar cruise control, which I think is just hilarious, a head up display and also night vision, which you can take or leave, but it all comes in that one package. I think it's just kind of silly that basic safety tech has to be optioned on a car like this when you find it on literally like a $20,000 car. So anyway, that's kind of frustrating. Um, let's have a look at the camera. I'll show you what that looks like. 
so there it is there the quality of that is excellent so you can clearly see what's going on out the front there that's our 360 camera pretty good resolution there too you can then select individual modes so that is looking out the front there with steering as well which moves when you move the wheel out the back and then you can also go a wider angle view on both fronts Love that, look at that, the quality of that is fantastic. So pretty impressive setup there from the reverse view camera. Let's talk about practicality and we'll start off with your connectivity. Where are you gonna put your phone? So phone can live in a number of places. You can slot it there, put it in the cup holders if you want, or there is a wireless phone charging pad down the front there. In terms of actual physical connectivity, you have two USB-C ports in the center console. You also have a 12 volt outlet there as well. Storing other things like your coffee cup, doesn't look like they like a small coffee cup here because there's so much clearance between the bottom of that that yeah, you're going to end up delitting that thing if you're not careful. Actually, this side's okay, but it's yeah, still not amazing for my little coffee cup. Um, then water bottle fits into there fine. You've got teeth that hold that into position. Water bottle fits inside the door too. Let's see if our big water bottle fits in. Oh yeah, that fits in as well, which is... Very nice. Uh, other storage, you've got this center console here. Nice and deep, N not huge, but sort of enough room to put odds and ends. This also slides forwards and backwards for a little bit more comfort. Over here, you have a glove box that is pretty reasonably sized, and you also have a little bit of storage just off to the side here as well. So let's talk comfort. Uh, it is a Bentley, you wanna be comfortable. So dual zone automatic climate control up the front here. You have heated and cooled seats, a heated steering wheel. The seats are pretty cool as well. Like you've got this, Red piping, you've got Alcantara there, the S lettering in the center there as well. And they are really comfortable too. They hug you in beautifully. You've got a massage function as well. So you hit that button and it brings up your massage menu. You've got a whole bunch of massages you can pick from. Then in terms of the seat adjustment, there is literally a litany of adjustment here. So forwards, backwards, backrest forwards, backwards. You can lift the front, you can lift the back. You can then also bring the front section out. You can adjust the bolster. There really is just so much you can actually change here and play with while you're driving, which is pretty awesome. And then your steering. So it is electrically adjustable for up and down, in and out. And then on the reach front, all of this stuff is easy to reach while you're driving. So let's talk second row here of the Bentayga. Um, we'll start off with room. I've got acres of knee room. Toe room is excellent. Headroom is pretty good as well. Actually surprised, often with these enormous SUVs, there isn't as much room in the second row as you would expect, but this actually feels really nice and comfortable. Then in addition to that, you can adjust the recline on your seat and also pull it forwards and backwards if you do need to give yourself a little bit more boot room as well. Other creature comforts, you have map pockets in the back here. You have device holder provisions up the top. Air vents here, again, metallic frame in and out to close those. You also have them here at face level too. A couple of hooks as well for your coat or overcoat or whatever rich people wear. Um, LED lights up the top there as well that are touch sensitive. Now down here, this is a pretty cool setup. So 12 volt outlet, two USB-C charging points. But this is where you control your temperature for the jewels or the quad zone climate control rather. So one on each side. This is also where you control the heated seats for the second row. But have a look at this. You have so many other settings you can play with here. I can do the blinds from here. And then in addition to that, if I don't want to bend over because it can be a little tiresome I can eject this little guy and actually make all of those changes myself on the screen there. So really cool setup, very impressed with that. Um, cup holders, you've got a center armrest here with two cup holders there. So a bottle fits into there. You've got some teeth holding that into place as well. Then your bottle can go inside the door too. Isofix, you have two Isofix points and three top tether points as well. And finally, our window test. Does it go all the way down? Does more money mean more window down? Oh, so close, almost. So what's your cargo capacity like? You crack it open by pushing that. Powered tailgate, of course. Uh, you have just under 500 litres of cargo capacity here before you drop the second row. It's not a bad space. It's just quite a high sort of lift from the floor there. And then if you have a look under the cargo floor, you can kind of see why they've got subwoofer, a computer of some sort, a battery under there. You really don't have much more available space to bring this any lower, but it does mean you can store a few odds and ends under there. There is no spare tire, so you do get a tire repair kit 
um, instead. So that's that's what that layout looks like. Now this has the optional cargo management system as well, so that can slide forwards and backwards to stop your things moving around as you go. Over here you've got a 12 volt outlet, then in addition to that, if this is too high to load your things in, you can drop the rear end just by pushing and holding this. That lowers the back of the car all the way down, and that means you can sort of get your things in and out a little bit easier once it reaches the bottom there. I'll show you what it looks like once your bags are in. So laptop there, pop our suitcase in there. So still have enough room if you do need it. Now, if you do want a little bit more space, you can drop the second row and that will give you access to a little under 1800 litres of cargo space. So I've just hit the road in the Ben Tega. Now I've got to tell you, um, you know, owning an EV, having driven stacks of EVs as well, this is probably as close as you get to an EV in terms of quietness when you're driving at low speed. Bentley has absolutely nailed noise suppression. Then in addition to that, they've really nailed giving you enough of that V8 noise without it being overbearing or too much. And it is a really fine balance to strike in a car like this. You don't want it to be too booming or annoying, especially at low speeds. You don't want it to annoy your neighbours. This has a nice delicate bark at startup to let you know that you know it is a V8. And then once you're moving, it is so silent and um, that's what I really like about it. So let's talk about the engine. This is a pretty common engine to the Volkswagen Group range. It's a twin turbocharged four litre V8. You're gonna find this engine in KN. You'll also find this engine in things like Urus. So it is common to that family, RSQ8 as well. In this particular spec, it produces just over 400 kilowatts of power, a little under 800 Newton meters of torque, and it's mated to an eight speed torque converter automatic train. Transmission. It is the perfect combo because there is no dual clutch there to annoy you and it is such a nice and smooth gearbox that you really rarely ever notice it actually doing anything. So it is pretty impressive from that regard. Now in terms of fuel economy, it is a V8 so do expect it to be high. The official claim is 13 litres per 100 k's. Just because of the way today turned out, we did all of our on-road driving filming right at the end of the day so I've had a bit of fun with the car and it's currently sitting at just under 20 litres per 100 k's. But on the way here, uh, predominantly with highway driving, it was sitting closer to 10 litres per 100. So depending on the type of driving, it isn't going to be too too bad. This also has cylinder deactivation, which means that it can shut down cylinders to conserve fuel while it's driving as well. So now, what does all of that feel like behind the wheel? I told you how quiet it was, so I'm going to just roll into the throttle here. Oh, that is such a nice sound. Such a beautiful sound. I love that V8. The W12 is a work of art because it's 12 cylinders and unique engine configuration. It's pretty cool, but this 8 is just so smooth. Oh, and it has so much torque, it doesn't need to even dive back through gears. It just really pushes on its torque band. It just gives you a lot of latitude there. It's quick as a gearbox as well. The engine is a little laggy. I noticed there if I do sort of get stuck into it when the turbos aren't spooling, it can be a little lazy to respond. Yeah, but look, it's not that bad. It really sort of, you have enough there before the turbos spool anyway, so it really isn't the end of the world. So Bentley, what's the ride like in and around the city? You've got a number of different drive modes to choose from here. It starts off in Bentley mode, which is kind of a bridge between comfort and sport, but you can slot it over to comfort or you can go over to custom where you can configure exactly what the car is doing all on your own. Um, I really like comfort because if you are driving you know, with people in the car on a longer distance trip, it is really nice and smooth inside the cabin. You barely feel anything going on outside the car. And despite the fact you're running on 22 inch alloy wheels, it just glides over everything. So it is the ultimate uh, GT car when it comes to that type of driving. And then if you do want to dial it up a bit, you can move your way through these different modes. So suspension's good sort of in and around town, but what's it like on our sine wave? So this is a test we do to simulate some country road driving here in Australia. I'll hit this at 1.30 in comfort mode and we'll see what that feels like. Slot it over to comfort. Here we go. Oh wow. Yeah look <laughs> it's pretty floaty at the top end there. So yeah once it does sort of get a little bit of oscillation the body control isn't great there. And look, ultimately, that's a trade-off with comfort mode. For this to feel as comfortable as it does, you need to soften it right out. But the good news is, as you progress through these modes, and I'll show you when we get to sport mode, it becomes a completely different beast altogether. Righto, let's pop this into sport mode. Wow, straight away, that becomes so much firmer. And depending on the speed that you're doing, it will hunk it down as well. It becomes a little more sonorous. Jump on the brakes. Dial in some steering. Far out. 
This thing is holding on for dear life. Okay, you're not gonna believe me when I say this, but far out. this actually feels like a go-kart, like a, a, an enormous go-kart, but a go-kart nevertheless. It is absolutely hoofing along here. Jump on those brakes. Ooh. Don't love the brake pedal feel. It's sort of, it's quite a firm pedal and doesn't give you a great deal of responsiveness. Let's see what it's like on our back section here. Far out, it has got some absolute mumbo. This is a heavy car, it's like over 2,400 kilos and it's sitting virtually dead flat as we punt it through these corners. Oh, it is so good. Okay, we're gonna come onto our back straight here. I'll wind on the throttle here. We'll see what it feels like when we get stuck into it. Here we go. Whew. Oh man, it has got some legs. It is pushing on nicely, far out. That is so cool. It absolutely hammers. Yeah, there is nothing stopping it. It is bloody unreal. And the other thing I noticed as well, here on our sine waves, while it is a bit sketchy in comfort mode, if we hit these in sport mode, because it firms up the ride so much, it sits virtually dead flat. There are no issues at all. It is like a complete difference there. And that's what I love. There's no point having drive modes if they're not gonna be polar opposites. And this is exactly that. Sport mode is sport, comfort is comfort. It is as simple as it needs to be. But this thing is an absolute missile. It's worth pointing out as well that the air suspension has a three chamber damper on it. It is pretty impressive. And then it is height adjustable as well. So it can go all the way from an access setting to a kind of off-road setting. It can even vary the anti-roll system, supplying up to 1300 newton meters of torque within 0.3 seconds. And that is what keeps this thing dead flat through corners. Righto, let's talk zero to 100. So, it has an official claim of 4.5 seconds. We'll see how it goes up against our V-Box. That's all set up. I've got this in sport mode. I will put stability control off as well. And I reckon we are good to go. I'm keen to see what this sounds like at full noise as well. So here we go. Violent gear shift, bloody hell. Uh, that's not bad, 4.4 seconds, zero to 100. Not bad at all. And then 80 to 120 in 2.6 seconds. So that is your overtaking speed. So pretty impressive there on both fronts. This thing really has some legs, both from a standstill and then once it's moving as well. Now, our infamous reverse test. How quickly can we go from zero to whatever the max is in reverse? Uh, we'll see what the top speed is, here we go. God, it has some punch. 46, 47, so it looks like 48 k's an hour is our top speed in reverse, but by golly, it absolutely hauls once you stand on the throttle in reverse. I love it. Now let's talk about visibility. So visibility down the front is great. I can see clearly down there. You've got big wing mirrors with the blind spot monitor built into them. Visibility out the back is good as well. Cameras are great. So, and you've got a semi-autonomous parking feature as well. So you're pretty much sorted there in terms of moving this in and around the city. Doesn't feel too big or daunting. So time for our next test. This is all about testing lane support systems. This car actually has a lane departure warning, a lane keeping assistant, and also like a lane centering assistant as well. So I'm gonna set the cruise at 80 k's an hour. And then what we're gonna do is use the three outer lanes of the bowl here to test how well that works. I'm gonna flick it on just by pushing that. You can see it's active down there. So what I'll do is just hold my hands just off the steering wheel. I'll prompt it to go towards the edge. We'll see what it feels like. So it's steering itself back in, vibrating the wheel a little bit as well. Seems to be doing an okay job there. Let's jump over to the next lane. This next lane is on slightly more of an angle. This is where cars start getting a little confused. Let's wait for that symbol to come up. So the steering is active. Ventured across that line there. And now it's just straddling that line entirely. It's not actually keeping this in the center of the lane all that well. Mm. Don't love that, because if this was a real road, I wouldn't want to be sitting next to the bloke that's currently riding the line. Um, so yeah, not great. Let's try jumping up to the third lane here. Keep in mind as well, this is part of the $16,000 optional package. Um, okay, we've got our bank active. Okay, hold on, I'm just waiting for that steering wheel symbol to come up. 
it's coming in and out of that steering wheel symbol, so it can't actually even recognise that there are lanes. Okay, so it's found one of them. I'm going to let go of the steering wheel. We'll see what happens. No, that's just failed. So, um, yeah, not that impressive. So it only works in lane one and two. Lane sort of three, it just wasn't interested at all. So I think I'm a little bit disappointed with that because given the price of this car, you would have thought they'd put a little bit more effort into these lane support systems, given that, um, you know, Volkswagen Group, they have all this technology available to them. Um, yeah, not great. Righto, so the Bentley Bentayga S. I'm going to go out on a limb here. I reckon Lamborghini Urus is just a bit much and out there. Rolls-Royce Cullinan, a bit too flashy and showy. This sits in that perfect middle ground where you know it's a Bentley. It looks stunning. It has stacks of luxury. It's really nicely appointed inside. I mean, just look at it in that red and the black. It just looks sensational. So styling is subjective, but I love the look of it. Um, in terms of the negatives, I really wasn't blown away with the brakes. I thought pedal feel wasn't very good. And we drove this the same way that we drive every other car here. And the brakes just didn't have that confidence inspiring feel after a bit of harder driving. So I think Bentley definitely needs to work on that. Outside of that though, the engine is sensational, has plenty of punch, and it kind of leads me to believe they probably have a bit more headway to release a faster version of this down the track. So I'm keen to see what they come up with has the perfect amount of noise on the outside. It's quite subdued, but then rowdy when it needs to be. So it really is just a fun car to drive. Now, let me know in the comments section below. Do you own a Bentayga? What's it like to live with longer term? Do you like the design of it? Do I need to go to Specsavers? Let me know what you reckon down there. If you did enjoy this video, please make sure you like it and you share it with your mates. And if you haven't done so already, subscribe to our channel. What are you waiting for? But until next time, take it easy.